So Blacksit family, it's a bit noisy, but I just want to show you something and I want to introduce you to someone. This is Rasville. Rasville. Now, if you want to talk about one of my favorite clothes shops here in Brussaby at Turntable, now I got to come here. Now my dad was Ras, yeah? So the best shop for me to play to, sorry, the best shop for me to play, you hear that? <laughs> the best shop for me to play my reggae music, <laughs> or the best place for me to buy my reggae music, the best place for me to find a good musician, and the best place for me to get some beautiful clothing is at Rasville Fashion. And who am I here with the proprietor of Rasville Fashion? Please introduce yourself yes, to the Black Sit subscribers, <laughs> yeah, brother. Yourself, Black Thank Sit. you. One love, yeah, one. Make up yourself all the while, yeah. Each and every one, yeah, man. Let's come inside. Make up yourself, Slash, yeah, yeah, man. Come and come, come forward and see the place. Yeah, man. So t tell everybody your name. Tell everybody what you do. And yeah, man, Joe Tex, man. Yeah, man, musician. That will bring me to Gambia, bring me to Africa. Yeah. And so we yeah, are business, as you know. Joe Tex been doing business for years. Anyone who knows Joe Tex from England. Mm -hmm. A business we are doing from way back in the retail sector, you know. Yeah, man, we're moving into a different sector right now because the world is open up in Africa right now. There's growing opportunities for, you know, the small man to enter many places that um, you can't really enter in certain businesses in the UK and in Europe, you know what I mean? So uh, that's how we do. Yes, I do. We do some business and make some employment and then some farming and things, you know. We do enough things. But in the meantime, between time, just have a look at the shop and, you know, yes, do it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, see, yeah. so yeah, so this is my favorite rash shop, Rasville. Yeah, yeah? um, I, I love Africa because of the variety of clothing that you can get in Africa, yeah. and I love the fabrics, I just love everything African. But essentially, what I love here is the fact that Gambians love reggae music wow, and mean? they love the Rastafarian culture. Rastafarian. And it's imbued in the, in, in, in the culture here. Yeah. It's very, very much um, a part of the culture here. And they appreciate us. That's why people like Chronics have been here. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, oh gosh, so many people Joe have been Tex here. Have come here. Joe Tex <laughs> is here, but you're Actually, in good company. You're in good company yeah, yeah. because um, you know you've got ja, uh, ja, ja, um, what's his name now? It's gone out of my head. Mm -hmm. What's his name now? Come on, Jackie. Jackie, oh, thank you. Yeah. You know what? Ja, 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 ja Rastafari. <laughs> <laughs> so Jackie. Um, has been here. Um, Buju Banton has been here. Many, many, My many. Imagine them just left here um, just for the year. Last year, Christmas, Phantom Oja. Yes. Yeah, the Luton. Luton Fire, Phantom Oja, and um, what the other one name? Um, not a you there. Mm -hmm. But the whole of them was here, do a very, very good show. One of the best shows um, I've seen in the Gambia, actually. Because I've seen enough artists come here. And um, I never went and see them actually, but the response, the, the reaction from people is that they come to Africa and they don't give them a proper show like what they see in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But the Phantom Ocha show was the one of the Luton Fire, one of the best show I, I as an artist can see them in full joy, you know? It's yeah. really, really good. And you know, for be, people say, Joe Tex, why you come in Africa and open business here? Is there any money in Africa? You know, because yeah. you know, in the West, everything about Africa is really. Let's dumb. go sit at the back. Yeah, man. Come, yeah. come forward. Just I want you to show. Forward. I want you to show me around the shop as yeah, well. Man, this is the kind of things them that the African youths all the tracks with them, clothes them. You know, this is what we bring. All original. You know, mm -hmm. original clothes. You know, we bring them. Bob Marley. Them love Bob Marley. Every yes. day. Yes. This is Gambia. Is about Bob Marley, Peter Tash, the Whalers. You know, they don't play, they don't play with reggae music. You know, they're Muslim. The Gambian people are Muslim, but they love Jamaica reggae culture. I mean, I think they love Jamaica culture more than any African country that um, I have been to. And then I heard a lot of people talk about it. You know, them don't play with it. You know, we're in the West now. The culture is kind of dry up. We do, you know, running through. We do bags. We do jackets. You know, we do Lovely. jackets. Uh, the, the thing was the thief uh, for Rasta, them thief for uh, our culture, you know. This is just a few things what we do, you know. Yeah, man. And then we give them the full hundred, all the, all the smoky bits, you know. 
we sell over here. When he first come there, the police man used come and say, ah, this thing legal to be sold. You know? <laughs> <laughs> to look at them and say, yes, man, everything is illegal. Because they don't really to know about certain things. But them catch on now, and they're all right, you know? Yeah, man. So come in, you know, and sit up, we do everything, you know? And you hats. You cover right your hats. And not only um, Rasta stuff we do, we do ladies stuff too, you know? We do, um, and not only culture, we do formal stuff as well, you know? Fashion. Fashion for the man, the boy, the mother really, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, we do all the flat, latest fashion and thing, and you know, African. Nice yeah, girls. Dresses, nice. Yeah, because the, the most of them girls, they might dress up now, you know? Mm -hmm. And they might go out and go places and do them thing, you know? So we do all this stuff here. You're going out stuff. You see? Some nice bits and pieces, you know? I like these trainers. I'm going to mm -hmm. come back, you know. Look at all them stuff there. I love these trainers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. All the Jamaican dress, them love this kind of dress, you know? Yeah, them love them thing there. Yeah, yeah, you know? And they get something. We do give them everything what we do in, in, in England, you know? So the same thing where them can get to Europe, to England, them get it right here in Africa. The same quality them can get in England, Europe, they get it right here in Gambia. But they don't get the same price. That's the only thing, the price is far cheaper. Cause when we first come, when I first came, I came to do a show. Bridget, um, a youth called Royal Natty brought me to do a show. Cause he brought my CD over here and a youth named Fireman used to play it and them love it. And them say, Yo, yeah, not Fireman. Yeah, Fireman, a good youth man for Gambia. And um, they sent for me to come here and we do some shows. And the show was very successful. Yeah, man, you can look on it on YouTube and then place there. Yeah, how can we see your music? This is this is a good point. So I want everybody to go and, have you got a YouTube channel? YouTube is Joe Tech Shaka. Joe Tech Shaka. Shaka. So everybody has got to go on to Joe Tech Shaka. Shaka with two K, S-H-A-K-K-A, -K -K -A, Joe Tech Shaka. We'll put and it on Facebook the screen. Too. Yeah, yeah, man. Because what happened, there was another Joe Tex, and people get mixed up with that Joe Tex there. Eh? So I put Joe Tex Shaka. Uh -huh. Yeah, man, you could go and find off the thing. But I've been doing no special record for the last two years because I come to Africa and I uh, want to retire. Repatriation is a must as a Rasta. Yes. I wanted to retire somewhere in the Caribbean or Africa. And then I chose Africa when I came here and I saw the response for the music here. And not only the music, the clothes, the people was running me down on the street for take off. Every time I put on a Rasta, Bob Marley t-shirt, they run me down for it. A scarf, anything with Rasta. So I say, I see the opportunities here. I say, yo, you know, something I can come forward and try a thing and see, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, when I came here and I opened the shop, it was brilliant, man. Till now, even all with this um, corona thing, the youths them still come out. And yeah. the local youths them, man. The ghetto youth, the Burkama youth them, youth them from back how. You all the youth them, yeah, the youth them come out and them the support, yeah? Mm -hmm. You know, so big up all the, the Gambian youth them, man. Them real article and them love the vibe, you know what I mean? I have big them up. Because if I was to depend on tourists alone for come support the shop, it would, it would have never work, you know? So I have to respect the Gambian them youth and the people them, you know? That's mm -hmm. the far right. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So um, basically, um, I also see that you've got a good book there. Can I have a look at that book? Oh. I just want to big someone up. Yeah, yes. this is Mac, um, San, San book. Yeah. So this is to big up McConnell Sankofa. It was McConnell that brought me to this shop. Wow. Yeah. So you see, you have to big up McConnell. And so this book is a great book and it's available on Amazon. So you can get this book. So please get this book. I've actually read the book and I must say I enjoyed reading it. One of the best Rastafari miss I have. Yeah, book. yeah, it's, it's really informative. Read. Yeah, I'm half a bit early yeah. it's, it's really informative. When it comes to Rasta, I don't play, and I'm very critical, but I always say, the youth, this youth here, I can recommend this book because it's not too much, and the way how we explain Rastafari and the amount of information you've put in, in such a small time you could read it in, you know what I mean? It's very great yeah. in the way he wrote it. So I'm going to big him up, McConnell, you know, Sankofa, big up yourself all the while, you know what I mean? And I always recommend this book. Actually, the two that leave back there, I'm not even selling them. Oh, well, let me put it back. It's <laughs> for <laughs> family, because people come in all the time, and they ask for them, and I'm taking them from my family, them leave out, and them, then saying, yo, leave that Mr. Half there, them one that Mr. Half, you know? So big him up, the way he articulate and put it together, and put, bring all the information, and you know what I mean? Um, certain things he might talk about, I'm afraid of him, of respect, you know? So Julie, yes. 
So big up black blacks that again, family and thing. We are Africa, you know. Yeah, Corona lock them down. <laughs> <laughs> but we free, don't. <laughs> yeah, it's a corona, the corona come lock them. Oh, down. I'm telling you, aren't you glad? I mean, seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm talking on a very serious note now. Um, you know, it was like my ancestors were calling me, calling me, calling me back home. And um, now when I see the way that some of my brothers and sisters are being treated in America, are being treated in England, are being treated in the UK, you know, it makes me sad. It makes me incredibly sad because they're like prisoners of war. I mean, quite literally. You know, I, I was watching um, a program that someone sent me with, I think it was Sean King in it, where he was showing um, a place in Manhattan, a park, where everybody had gathered. When I say everybody, everybody of European, de of, of, of European um, descent, right? White people had gathered in a park. And on the same day, um, they were showing clips of where, you know, two or three black people were talking and they were getting pinned down to the ground, mm. you know, and being arrested and being harassed and manhandled by police, but you had hundreds and hundreds of white people in a park. And then he showed another picture of white people in another area, all in a park, and the police was handing out, you know, these face masks. Word. You understand? And wearing a face mask. But the, the police that was apprehending the black people weren't wearing gloves and weren't wearing face masks. Mm. And then I'm hearing about, you know, um, People in America, when they've gone to hospital, they've been told that they're not a priority. I'm not saying it's happening in every case, mm -hmm. but what I am saying is that it is happening. I, I saw a, a video with one nurse, one white nurse crying and saying how, you know, the way that they're treating people is absolutely terrible, that they're giving them the wrong treatment. They're actually killing people. That's what she said. She said they're putting them on ventilators uh, mm -hmm. that they shouldn't be. Like one man, she said, had a heart rate of 40 and should never have been, and was bicardia. And he should never um, have been put on a ventilator, yet he was. And when she spoke to the head of nursing, it was like they just ignored her and then the man died. Wow. And then she was talking about so many different cases and instances, I can't go on all the time, but uh, mm. of different instances where they, they're mistreating black people in hospitals and allowing them just to die just to die and people not being able to be with their loved ones because of uh, the COVID or because they're saying that these people might, you know, cause other people to catch this virus. Mm. And so people are dying alone without loved ones. And then they're now saying that some people are even having their, their organs harvested mm. when they're dying. And then some people think, oh, that can't be true because, you know, COVID actually destroys the, 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 the organs. So that can't be true. So maybe it's not COVID that they actually died of. You know, and how many people are actually dying of COVID and how many numbers are actually being, you know, pronounced. And I'm going to call it CAPS, yeah, because I don't want the video to be taken down. So I'm going to call it CAPS. And you all, if you've watched Event 201, you will know exactly why I'm calling it CAPS. And if you haven't, go onto YouTube and watch Event 201 and you'll understand why I'm calling, why everybody's calling COVID CAPS. Yeah, because that is the name that they used in the simulation before the actual uh, uh, realistic uh, play of what is going on uh, uh, has come to play. But not only that, they've now got they've now got the cures. Wodemeyer's video got taken down. Yeah, mm. Wodemeyer put down uh, put up a video showing about um, what's the place called now Madagascar. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and then so Madagascar was apparently threatened. Word. Yeah, they were threatened. By who? You understand? Who threatened them about putting out, you know, this cure? Now, my point is, is that why is it you don't want people to have a cure? There are lots of cures. Cures in, in Zimbabwe, cures in Senegal. Yeah, even herbal cures here in Gambia. So why is it they don't want people to have cures? It's, it's a question. Yeah, they would rather have them take some kind of inoculation. Well, you know, something is but we have to be more clever. about business as well, you know, because... If you look at HIV, when AIDS first came about, mm -hmm. the man who found cure for AIDS, uh, HIV, them killed him. Dr. Sally was killed as well. Most Ebola, all these things, they don't want certain people to go and help the people them that have Ebola. It's only, so, it's only day people can go and find cure for certain things. You know? So they have the reason. Like I always said, it's covert, operation, vaccination, 19. Yeah. You see me? So, I saw the thing set up, you know? So, we don't really want to talk about that anyway. Yeah. The thing is, is that, um, the thing is, is that 
Um, I'm just talking about the situation that we're in lockdown right now. <coughs> Sorry. You all right? Yeah. I'm talking about the situation that we're in. We're in lockdown right now. And, um, you know, the lockdown is uh, different for us in Africa to what it is for our people in, in Europe, for our families in America. Um, and what they're going through is different. I know some people haven't left their house for months now. It's a war, it's an attack on the poor people, you know. I see this, I see this whole thing covered 19. Like I said, it's a covered operation. It's a world war on the poor people and business, the poor people who are climbing. People was um, reaching, coming out of that poverty level. Because look at the amount of business, the amount of catastrophe this thing has caused. The amount of people who have lost businesses through to this. And the after effect can go on for years. About five to ten years, this can continue, you know? So I see this as it's a world war right now we're going through. We don't know what's the real end game here. We can guess. There's a lot of theories out there. But you never know where this thing is going to lead to. But one the, we have to look at the negative and we look at the positive. It's time to bring one and ones together, look at the positiveness, and make people all the time who have been given certain prophecy, certain warning, now is the time for them to get up and get out. I don't think it's too late. I think the gate is going to open again. Yep. And I think people should act on it right now. Don't, at the moment, don't take things for granted anymore. Those who've been sitting on for years, you know what I'm saying? You're always going to get people in a Babylon, no matter what take place. If Babylon go up in a smoke or ashes, they're going to stay and deal with it. But those who want to get out, now is the time to start organize, centralize, and rise. Repatriation is a must. We there, yeah, we are build farm. We are doing enough projects down here, you know what I mean? And enough ones and ones, they're needed in these places here. No matter what them tell you about Africa, Africa is like any other place. Them have them challenges. You know what I mean? Black people, black people everywhere you go. Africans are African everywhere you go. But once you come in and you have a good personality and you don't come for disrespect anybody like you got Jamaica, you know, disrespect, you know, violate, you got Guyana, you know, disrespect, you know, violate treaty that, you know. The same way you come to Africa, you just humble, even though you don't think you're better than them, even though they might do certain things that is not the way you are do it. Sit back sometime and watch them and learn. And if you can show them a thing, don't feel say like you know more than them too. The same as the ways of doing things, you know what I'm saying? Because that would be sit on here, sir. I that me I watch and me observe Africans and I learn enough thing off of them. Yeah. And one thing I learned about the Gambian people, them very peaceful. Yes, I learned that because there's enough little things I see because they end up escalating up in a war zone. And me see them just defuse it and deal with it in a Rastafari way. And me say, yeah. Rastafari. <laughs> so big them up all the way. You know, Africa for the Africans, home and abroad, you know. As I say, Marcus Gavin say, Bob Marley come tell them, you know. So we there, yeah, man. And like my heart goes out because my family they are UK too. Every day I contact them, talk with them, my heart goes out for them and my youth them. Family they are America too. For them, you know. So but them have to know so I like to teach them, you know what I mean? Doing certain things in certain circumstances. And when this thing reached its climax and it's over, pull together, we have to make decisions, you know. That's how the thing set up. And Julie, for yourself, big up because you're doing a great work. <laughs> thank you, yeah, thank man. you. Actually, I see Black Zet even before I come this last trip because about four or five years there, you know, I go and come, you know. And I see him doing the work and I say, what a joyful world, what a lovely smile that someone has when I do the work and I promote the country and the repatriation thing, you know. Because sometimes we look for the repatriation through this um, dreadlocks thing or uh, what people perceive as Rasta, you know. But like we say, Rust is in the heart and the soul. Of course. Yeah, it's not all the time the man with the dreadlocks gonna come and save you and know, take his eye on you know. Cause enough of them come and call the trumpet. Like I'm gonna tell the people they have a thing when you I'm gonna tell you another thing I'm uh, gonna tell enough Gambians over here. Reggae is not Rasta. And Rasta is not reggae. There are Rastas who sing reggae. And there's Rastas who don't even participate in a reggae. There's Rasta who don't smoke. There's Rasta who eat meat. This Rasta who don't eat meat. A lot of things about Rasta, people don't really know about Rasta. You also said, that's why I big up my man book. Yeah, man, the rise of Rasta. Far, can you explain these things in here? And I don't even know him. And uh, years ago, me have a temple called Lali Bella. We used to teach all these things in Lali Bella Temple. Because people are very ignorant of Rasta for their own reasons. They want to be ignorant of it, you know? So give thanks to all the people them like yourself. Because there's many other sisters here. and. Um, a lot of other brethren over here, they're doing great works. 
in um, doing a lot of projects over here so and um, helping people to come back come forward to Zion and settle and these is things a lot of Rastas them is doing as well um, in Ethiopia mm -hmm. uh, Addis Ababa there a lot of Rastas doing things over there and people who don't have locks as well like yourself you know what I mean um, I used to have room. locks for 10 years, thank you very much. <laughs> I used to have locks for 10 good years, thank you very much. And the only reason why I cut my locks off was because um, at the time I was training um, somebody in, in personal development. Mm. And he used to like wear his trousers all the way down mm. and he used to profile in a way and I told him that if you keep profiling like this, you may get targeted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah? Because you might wear your trousers down, but you don't understand the meaning behind it. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. You don't understand the connotations behind it. That's the far right. And you need to understand what the symbolism of it yeah, was. Yeah. And you need to understand the sexual connotations wow. for wearing your trousers like wow, this. So I had locks. So he said to me, yeah, but you have locks. So people might think that you smoke uh, weed and you do this and you do that. I said, but I don't. Mm. He goes, yeah, but people might think that. That's your perception, so would you take your locks off? I said, if you change the way how you look, you change the way how you profile, I'll take my locks off in 10 minutes because it's my hair, mm, yeah? Mm. And if I want my locks back, I will get my locks back, Plus, yeah. right? So I pulled over and I went into a barber's and um, I cut my hair off, right. like short, like short, 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 short. And uh, took all the locks off. I kept the locks and I made a pillow with it. And, uh, you know, everybody was shocked to see me with, you know, no locks. I had locks for 10 years, beautiful locks for 10 years. However, fast forward to, I think it was about 13 years later, I'm on Facebook and I see a message come up. And he said, it's just a message saying, thank you for saving my life. I said, what? He said, thank you for saving my life. He said, the sacrifice that you did you know, I'm now a father, I have a, a, a child, I have a wife and I have a home and I would never have had that life if you wasn't my personal mentor and trainer and you didn't show me that you was prepared to make that sacrifice for me. So sometimes we have to live by example and make a sacrifice for, the, for, for our youths. True, true, true. Yeah, we have to, we have to do it. So you having this shop is an example for someone else coming here to, who wants to set up business You've been there for how many years now? Yeah, four or five years with it, yeah. Four, but four to five years, yeah. Yeah, and you didn't give up. You no, continued. No, come here, there's many challenges here. Even the government, come here, come here. Don't expect them to recognize you as a returning African. Them don't see, them not see us now African. You know what I mean? Like anyway, you know, them not, them not, them not know nothing but African return and slavery. They not teach them thing in a school. One nation, one Africa. Thank you, Black Sit family. Please keep watching, please subscribing, and remember, follow your dreams. Purchase your tracks today.
next day.